Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's your host with the most, AvriLR32 here. Destroy the ever boo-boo, staying off that like and subscribe button as we climb even higher, the 1400 ladder. I really do appreciate all the support. I am sadly losing my voice again. It feels like a cactus got shoved down my mouth. That is the most PG way that I can put it. <laughs> so um, I'm not going to be super bombastic in this video as much as I would love to be. It's also almost 11 o'clock at night here in the in Florida. So um, yeah, uh, let's just jump on into this while I pour some maple syrup down my holes. So <laughs> hope you all having a fantastic day. I appreciate all the support. I want to talk about deck building and how deck building, I feel, is really dead in Yu-Gi-Oh. I was testing around specifically with the um, new Millennium cards out of uh, Infinite Forbidden, along with like a Ken and Gen package, stuff like that. You, you really don't have to worry about these cards. This is just stuff that I was messing around with. But I'm messing around with the Millennium cards, right? And I'm, I'm trying to deck build ideas. And I quickly realized that deck building really isn't a thing in Yu-Gi-Oh anymore. Allow me to explain. When you're putting together a deck, ideally, if you want your deck to be competitive, depending on what you play, obviously you can play the semantics game of, oh, well, what if I'm playing runic stun or just straight stun? Obviously, you're probably not going to be playing any hand traps. But if you're playing even, say, like Snake Eyes, you're going to be playing anywhere to 15 or higher amount of hand traps. But the average number count, I would say, especially if you're testing a deck, is 15, you know, whether it's three by steals or definitely three shifter, three ash, three valor, three imperm, you know, and then insert any other three hand traps here. It could even be like three Fenrir's if you want, or throw in three Fenrir's with the 15 hand traps. Now you're talking about 18 cards in your deck and you haven't even started building your actual archetype yet. You know, it, just looking at this here, we're at three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18 with the talents. Plus, if you decide to play call by, that's 19. And that's not even including Fenrir. That gets you to, you know, over 20 cards. And I feel like especially talents, because talents is just such a god card, that these are cards I feel in, I would argue, 95 to 99% of meta decks you have to play. You know, uh, when you look back at how, like, when I got 10th place with Centurion, and granted, people really didn't know what the deck did, but I was playing 15 hand traps. I was playing three talents. I was playing double desires. Like, the in-archetype engine was so small that you had all of these flex spots to where I feel like at that point, you're not even really playing an archetypal deck. Your deck is just a small archetypal engine and your non-engine slots, your generically good cards, are what carry you. You know, I was playtesting Tempai Dragon uh, against my buddy. Shout out, as always, to our homie Valley D. And we go into game three. He's playing Chimera Branded, and I hit him with a draw phase of Shifter. And even he said, like, it's not the Tempai Dragons that won me the fucking game. It was the Shifter. And, like, I didn't argue that because he was absolutely right. Um, and I just feel that really, if you're trying to say, oh, I built this deck from scratch, I mean, yeah, maybe you did, but over a quarter of your deck is just stuff that's generically good on average. Like, again, there's the semantics of, like, if you're playing stun, you're not going to be playing 15 hand traps because you just don't have the non-engine slots. Maybe you're just playing three shifter, and that's it. Maybe you're playing lava golems instead. You're playing some, I don't know, random going second deck, like rank eight axis, Everything that you have is going to be engine. You're not going to be playing hand traps unless it's like shifter. There, there's different decks is the point that I'm trying to make. Um, and some other decks will be playing less archetypal cards. So they have more slots for things like, say, even a big cash Tira engine. I've seen people where they're not just playing three Fenrirs. They're playing, you know, three Fenrir, two Unicorn, and a Rise Heart with maybe a Birth if they have the uh, the space. Or like a cash Tira Theosis, whatever the case may be. And this extends not only into the main deck, but I feel also to the extra deck. Uh, specifically, Little Knight, Mascarena, Sky Crisis, and Zeus to a much lesser extent. I feel like most decks, when you're trying to be competitive, you have to, by far, play a fucking Little Knight. Like, if you're not playing at least one Little Knight, you're doing it wrong. Like, if you're not playing it, it's either because you're on a budget, or, like, you're playing some stun deck that just doesn't use the extra deck. Masquerina, maybe to a little bit of a lesser extent, but some decks will play it because then you can tag into a Little Knight that protects it from being destroyed by card effects, and then also banishes a card because you use a Link Monster. Sky Crisis to just shut off effects, and then Zeus, to a lesser extent, just being able to nuke the board after an Xyz Monster battles. But... 
I feel especially these three cards, you have to, in more cases than not, fit these into your extra deck. So now you're playing three cards out of the gate that are just generically good. You now only have 12 slots left in your extra deck. And I feel that this is a reason why a lot of people are like, oh, we need to extend the number of the extra deck, which we really don't. I think 15 is perfect. Um, but could you imagine if we had 20 card extra decks where, you know, you could play things that are generically good, like Little Night Mask, Grand Sky Crisis, or even play multiple copies just to be covered just because you have the extra space. I think that's where having 15 is really perfect. And on top of that, having these cards that you're almost forced to play just to have any chance at being competitive can also stymie out uh, more casual players. You know, I, I don't really feel like Yu-Gi-Oh! is a very casual, friendly game. Um, you know, being a casual player is not really something I talk about a lot on the channel because I do feel that overall I'm a competitive channel. But, you know, like little Timmy isn't going to play these four cards just to try and be competitive when Little Knight's so expensive. Little Timmy's going to be playing his Beaver Warrior Pendulum F Fire Fist Beatdown deck and not be playing 15 hand traps with three talents, maybe a call by, maybe a cross out just to make sure that you're, you know, guaranteed to get your combos through or with Fenrir. You know, it reminds me a lot, if I can find it here, I know for a fact that I have it. Uh, what is this? Chaos Control? Yeah, perfect. You look at something like GOAT Format, where people all the time will say that, you know, especially back in GOAT Format when you didn't really have archetypal decks, um, you know, like Sprite, Tier Element, obviously those things didn't exist. You didn't have archetype decks. But you had cards that were generically good, uh, i.e. Tribe Infecting Virus, Chaos Sork, BLS, Tsukiyomi Sangin, uh, Magician of Faith, Sinister Serpent. No matter what deck you played, you played things like Graceful Charity, uh, Nobleman Across Out, BLS, uh, Tsukiyomi, Sangin, uh, Tribe, a Pot of Greed, Heavy Storm, Delinquent Duo, Snatch Steel. You see where I'm going here? Like, all of these cards that I'm listing are cards that you had to fucking play or you were losing the ball game. And so, when you look at, the, especially these older decks, you get a much better idea of it. You look at all these cards that you were pretty much forced to play back in the day, you now have less than half your deck ready to be built for whatever it is that you're trying to build you know whether it's a i don't know just a random beatdown deck because if you didn't play these cards you were at such a disadvantage going back to uh the tempai dragon example you know this engine is so small that you have all this room for non-engine whether it's a snake eye engine or hand traps or whatever i, I you know deck building just is turning back into what it was like in 04 and 05, I feel. Now, is this necessarily a bad thing? And I don't know. You know, Joshua Schmidt made the good point of you don't want the game, it's not really fun, to just be throwing hand traps at each other until someone's able to get their combos through. Because especially in something like Tempai, you know, whoever opens up more hand traps, especially if like Tempai's going second, is just going to win. You know, there's so much non-engine in this that you can play Super Poly just because of the fact that you have the space. These could be talents. Uh, the, you know, the, the terraforming could be called by. Like, just as an example, the buy steals could be something else. The Nibiru could be something else. You have all this non-engine space. And the non-engine, you can get creative but when you have so much non-engine, and especially when you want to try and be competitive, where you need to be playing at least 15 hand traps to try and be uh, competitive somewhat, you're pretty much hard-locked into only using hand traps for your non-engine space if you have the room to spare. But if you don't have the room to spare, then you're at a much harder disadvantage, pause, <laughs> of winning games in 2024, winning matches in general in 2024, because if you're not playing these 15 plus hand traps, you're at such a disadvantage from the moment you sit down and start rolling that fucking dice. Because if you lose that die roll and you're not able to pull, uh, pop off and, you know, pull off your electric boogaloo combo, you're gonna lose, you know. Obviously, call by is only a one of, but if the opponent hand traps you, like, how are you playing through that? Is it just because you have enough gas going first that you can play through multiple hand traps? But even if that's the case, what are you doing when you go second? So all of this to say, 
how are we even deck building now in 2024? Like, I'm sure some people are going to say, well, depending on what kind of hand traps you choose, and, like, those could be good meta calls, and, like, that's fine. Like, you busting out a Reaper Winter Cherries in a fucking Tier 0 format, like, sure, that is technically creative, boo-boo, I guess. But when you're just so locked into having to play these hand traps, uh, to a lesser degree, talents, although I feel like every deck should be playing triple copies of talents because it's just that good a uh, call by even to a lesser extent same will cross out you end up just having all these decks that are really the same and konami at least years ago said uh that they don't want decks to all look and play the same but when your main archetypal engine is so small it's like you have the space you might as well or else you're gonna lose so guys let me know what you think about this am, am i just like off my rocker here like i said i'm super tired and my voice i feel like is going away again but um i really just wanted y'all's thoughts on this i feel like that this extends to the extra deck to a degree too you know whether it's you know playing just the generically good cards and not having enough space for archetypal extra deck stuff or even just having to play hand traps when you're trying to build a different deck um, obviously when you're first building something, you, maybe you won't run 15 hand traps, maybe you'll find a different engine, but all of this is to say, it just seems like every deck is the same. And I think that you can still see that whether it's a tier zero format or just a normal format, I think a lot of decks are playing the same cards and it just gets samey. And I don't really think that that's a good thing. Guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.